So, you're in Blender and working with geometry nodes, creating a procedural value just like the one I'm hooking up here, when you realize you want to use this value to control the intensity of a light. And you think to yourself, can you even connect these two things? And if so, how? The light on this spinning button is driven by geometry nodes. This entire scene is animated with a simulation zone and is the scene I'm creating in this video series. I'll show you how to control this particular light with geometry nodes at the end of the video, but first I'm going to use the simple nodes from the start of this video to show you how to control any light. And I'll do it in 3 minutes and 25 seconds because some of you might have a train to catch. Part of the method I use here was exploded into my brain via one of Erendale's videos. I've put a link in the description. He's a horse whisperer if horses were made of noodles. Anyway, first let's visualize our procedural value by turning it into a string. Then, using the new index switch with the length of this string to get the correct number of leading zeros before joining both strings and plugging them into a string to curves node. The legendary fill curve, then transform geometry to stand this thing up on its own four feet. Pressing spacebar to play, we can see that every three seconds our value ping-pongs between 0 and 1800. To send this value to the light behind our digits, I'm going to store it as a named attribute on the digit instances called power. Next, I'm going to create an intermediary object to intercept this attribute. Adding a cube, edit mode, then with all of it selected, merging add center. That little orange dot is a single vertex. I'm going to name it Convert because it's a vertex and we are going to use it to convert the attribute. <clears throat> Adding a Geometry Nodes modifier to it, then into the nodes. If I pull in our original cube with an Object Info node, I can sample the power attribute off of it. Then, with a set position and a combine XYZ node, I can use the power attribute to position the convert's geometry. Now, if I press play and zoom way out, we can watch the vertex bounce like a bungee jumping ant. It's Z position set with the ping pong power attribute. To connect this translation to the light, we can constrain an empty to the convert, an empty circle. I'm naming this empty driver, and if you think that's boring, just count your lucky stars I didn't call it Adam. Adding a constraint to it, a copy location constraint, and setting the target to convert, but pressing play, we can see that this doesn't actually work. This is because the set position node doesn't move the convert object, it positions the vertex in it. The translation of the object itself remains unchanged. But in edit mode, I can select the convert vertex. Then in the data tab, add a vertex group. I'm naming it power VG, then doing the thing I always forget to do, assigning the vertex to it. Tab out of edit and back to driver, where I can now select power VG as the constraints vertex group. Now when I press play, the driver is launched into the sky, constrained specifically to the position vertex itself. All that's left to do is connect the driver's translation to the light's power. For this, we'll add a driver, an actual blender driver. I'm going to use a scripted expression. For the variable, I'm selecting the driver empty and for its type, Z location, and though we may want to get all mathematically ambitious and fancy with this later, I'm reducing the expression to just the variable. And there we have it, the light's power driven by geometry nodes. You can apply this technique to anything that can be controlled by drivers. Until there's an official way to do this, the convert is your forever friend. And you know what? If you want to make it your best forever friend, back with our convert geometry nodes, add inputs for the vertex group, attribute name and object. Then, once you've been your best self and renamed the geometry node group, 
save the file. Because now you can use the same setup on other projects, like the alien test. Wow, that was smooth. At the end of the last episode, I had used the simulation zone to shift and spin the button around the room. Now I want to put a light at the center of the button controlled by the factor attribute. Let's take a look at this attribute through the viewer with 4.1's phenomenal new attribute text feature. If I click it, we can see the attribute's value in real time in the 3D viewport, which is an absolute game changer, especially if you're someone who always likes to have the subtitles on. This value is gonna drive the power of this light. Since I've already made a convert rig, I'm not that interested in making another, so I'm going to append that one to this scene. If I was slightly more organized, I would set it up as an asset, but despite what you think, I'm not perfect. In the file viewer, I'm selecting the file I saved earlier, then the object folder, then the driver. This will bring everything we need in with it, and the ping pong cube, which we don't need, so I've asked it to leave. Then selecting the convert, adding this scene's cube for the object and changing the attribute to factor. If I press play, I can see that the driver empty has been successfully connected and is now being translated by the factor attribute. Before I hook it up to this, I'm switching to rendered view for some of that EV goodness so we can actually see what we're doing. Then connecting the driver to the light's power with a driver and changing the plus 1000 to a times 1000. Pressing play and the factor attribute is now driving the light's power. But it's a seeming light and everyone knows you don't turn those on. So to put the light inside the button, I can instance it along with all the other button elements in the button AP group. Doing this will instance it to the same position as the button box, the button pole, and the button button. And now we have two lights. An instanced light blocked behind all the other instances, and the light itself, which I'll drop into our excluded button collection, which I'll immediately include again to select button button, the instance blocking the light. We haven't textured anything yet, but I'm creating a new material just so I can set the shadow mode to none and let the light shine through. And that's the button light. And a really neat way of creating drivers from geometry nodes. I'll be using the convert system again in this series. See if you can spot it, but there won't be any prizes. If this video gave you that warm and fuzzy feeling, don't forget to like and subscribe. And remember, if you ever find yourself in the wilderness, in the darkest hours of the night, being stared at by a very, very angry bear, the absolute best thing you could do is